On February 14, 2018, 17 lives were lost during a school shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. This is just one of many major incidents that first responders have had to deal with in recent years. In Parkland, when the, the sheriff's office found out that their 26-year-old radio system was incompatible with the local police departments, resulting in major delay in the exchange of vital information about the suspect's description and weapon in use. An overload of radio traffic blocked the transmitting and receiving of messages. When the FBI, a SWAT, and fire department arrived on scene, there was a lack of a common platform of communication, leading to confusion, misused resources, and misguided instructions. By the time that clear communication was established and the school was deemed safe, everyone was already brought out by the police or was dead. Now the problem wasn't in these emergency personnel executing the tasks that they were given. These emergency agencies are trained in what they do and they are good at it. The problem was rooted in the fundamental basis of establishing any form of emergency response. Communication and the tools available for it. And mass shootings aren't the only time that communication breakdown with emergency agencies happens. It also occurs during child abduction incidents. Nationwide, over 1,260 children go missing every single day. Just take a look around this room. There are more than 2,000 people here in attendance right now. If children were sitting in these seats, 70% of this room would be empty right now. A child goes missing every 66 seconds. So by the time I'm done with my speech, 10 children would have gone missing. And at the end of our TEDx event today, 540. Now, needless to say, every second counts during a child abduction. Our local child abduction response team program, a coalition of local PDs and emergency agencies that pool in resources during a child abduction, constantly struggle with the communication breakdown. My eyes were open to the world of emergency response when a sergeant told my high school STEM internship class that there's a 40 minute delay for when information comes to the coordinating officer to when officers out on the field receive it. And relaying this information comes down to trying to bypass a radio system jammed up with too much traffic, personnel or word of mouth uh, to personnel on site, or trying to coordinate incompatible systems of communication. And this is, issue, this is a national crisis, and we need to solve it right now. So how do we address this problem? as citizens, as lawmakers, as emergency agencies, as a community. The solution is really simple. We build the right, uh, tools for the right tools for communication using technology. Throughout my year-long experience with the West Fargo Police Department, I realized that there are three distinct technological transformative st stages that we need to go through in order to build and utilize these tools. Structural transformation, software transformation, and sustainable transformation. The first stage is structural transformation through technology. Now, how many of you in this room don't have smartphones? Right? Yeah, nice laugh. Because, like, it's, it's true. So, like, you would expect very few of us to not have smartphones, which means the majority of us have access to the best, most common, most versatile piece of technology used for communication on a daily basis. However, so many emergency agencies do not have access to work issued smartphones. And even if they do, these smartphones are only limited to certain personnel 
leaving the majority having to rely on radio, uh, radio communication, in-person communication, or methods that would require a computer during an emergency incident. In 2015, New York City Police Department, uh, the largest police agency in this nation, finally equipped its 36,000 police officers with smartphones nearly a decade after the first iPhone came out. According to the NYPD, issuing these smartphones has transformed the way their officers, officers respond to emergency incidents. Not only are they now able to respond to 911 calls faster, but it allows them to solve crimes more efficiently and even create a stronger tie with their community. Now the second stage is software transformation, utilizing these smartphones. The NYPD's use of software after issuing the smartphones included uh, features such as sending 911 calls directly to the officers reducing their response time by 12%. Now, there are so many software solutions out there that can enable uh, communication on a large scale. And although some of these software solutions might not have all of the features that these emergency agencies are looking for, it is imperative that we invest in existing solutions as well as those in development to even have a chance in breaking down this communication barrier. Now the last stage is sustainable transformation through technology. Providing the hardware and software solutions to these communication issues is not enough. It is not enough to get the latest technology and be good for the next 10 years. We have to constantly be developing and transforming with the capabilities of the latest technology. With the pace of technological advancement in the US, the average expected lifespan of smartphones is just three years. And software is six years, and that's not including new versions or patches. Investment in these technologies is not a waste of time. But soon enough, the technologies that we will be giving, or the tools that we will be giving uh, these emergency agencies will become legacy methods of doing things. And we need to make sure, and it is very crucial that the tools that are available to our emergency personnel will uh, not hinder their ability to communicate and collaborate like they've done before. Now, this is going to be an expensive endeavor. But emergency incidents are so much more expensive. To give you a cost analysis, the average West Fargo police officer gets paid $45 an hour overtime. A recent standoff shooting that happened at a motel earlier this year required an additional 30 officers to be called off duty to come and respond. This means that for one hour of response, this incident cost $1,350. This means that one hour of response could have paid for two of the 30 officers' phones. Investment in these technologies will only save our law enforcement time allow them to save money, but most importantly, allow them to save lives. And there's no price that we can put on a life. So today is all about going forth and taking action. Last year, I went forth to try to solve this issue, and now I'm developing software that can allow for multiple agencies to communicate on the same platform. And today, is your turn to go forth. And not just today, but after today and every day in our communities. This is my call of action to you. For the legislators and lawmakers out there, pass lo we need to pass laws that bring new technology, new software, and transform the ways of communication for those who protect and serve us every single day. It is our responsibility to ensure that they have the right tools to save lives. For the ci civilians out there, we need to become advocates. We need to take initiative and vote for these changes. Things won't happen without the support and activism of the community to ensure its own safety. To the law, law enforcement and emergency personnel, make these issues aware to our communities. Vo identify areas in which we can improve on and allow technology to help these areas uh, 
to help these areas um, become more efficient. We cannot solve problems that we are not aware of, don't understand, or we, do not, uh, we can't identify. To everyone, I want you to understand one thing. Transformation doesn't happen without effort. It doesn't happen without commitment. It doesn't happen without risk, investment, or support. We need to focus on eliminating the one barrier for communication so that we are no longer uh, relying on the emergency to dictate the outcome. Let's give the right tools for communication to our first responders. Because in the end, safety is our shared responsibility. Thank you.